uh, sticking around till the end. So like basically this is joint work with uh, my really great co-authors, uh, Rachel Cummings, Heidi Alzine, Vesel Gatsalis, and Manolis Pontarakis. And so kind of like what I want to get out of this work is I want to kind of like take the point of view of a platform or an analyst who wants to maybe run a statistic, who wants to train a machine learning model. And what they're going to do, how they're going to do this is they're going to use like user data. So maybe if I'm an analyst, I can create a study and have people participate in the study and use the data from the users, like from the individuals in the study to um, train my statistic. If I'm a platform, if I have users that actually join the platform, I can actually use their data to also train my model. <laughs> so the point, however, is like in a lot of the situations, like the analyst, the platform is going to be dealing with like potentially private and sensitive data. And so here, one thing that's going to happen is um, agents are going to be incurring privacy costs. They're going to be incurring privacy losses for actually joining a study, joining a platform, sharing their data in some sense. So kind of like to just give you an example of like what's going on here, what can happen. Maybe I'm an analyst who's trying to run a medical study. I'm trying to understand a rare disease better. I'm trying to obtain better treatments for that disease. When I'm doing this, well, I'm going to use medical info about individuals that have this rare disease that are going to participate in my study. Uh, the problem when I'm doing this is like, obviously this is very sensitive data. Just knowing that the person participated in the study is revealing a lot of information about them. It's revealing that they are likely to actually have the rare disease. If I'm an online platform and I rely on my recommendations, I rely on a recommendation system, I'm going to kind of like train this recommendation system on user data, on you know their content history, on their ratings. And that's probably information that the users like don't really also want out. So you kind of like need to be careful with the privacy of your users in this case. <laughs> So as the platform here, I want to do two things. And like, I want to incorporate these privacy considerations in two ways. The first thing that I want to do is I want to provide some uh, formal guarantee of privacy and make sure that I'm going to protect the privacy of the participants. And the other thing that I want to do is like, even when I'm doing this, there's still going to be some remaining privacy losses. So I want to compensate the users in some way for their privacy losses. But let me talk a bit more about the first one. Um, so what we're doing in this paper is we're using differential privacy as our privacy technique. I'm not going to tell you too much about differential privacy because Gautam already gave a great tutorial about this today. So um, yeah, I'll just give you kind of like the key ideas we're using here. And the things we're relying on is, okay, one way to get differential privacy is you're going to be adding noise to your statistic or to your model. This noise is kind of like in some way going to hide, like, like hide the true uh, data of the users. And this is going to be parameterized by some parameter epsilon. And the smaller this epsilon is going to be, this is going to mean that we're going to add more and more noise to the computation. And that means we'll get more privacy in this case. So now that I told you that like we're using differential privacy, what's going to happen is still like the users are still going to have privacy losses as a function of which epsilon you're going to be using in your mechanism. And so we're going to have to compensate users for their privacy losses. Um, and what's new in this paper is, you know, there is a lot of work actually that looks at data acquisition and those kind of settings with differential privacy. But usually the way this is modeled is that you have users or agents that don't really care about the outcome of the statistic or the model. So the only way you can really compensate them is through payments. So you actually have to pay the agent for the data. Here, what I'm trying to say, and like what we're doing in this work, and that's also down in the follow-up work of uh, Fala et al., um, is that we're going to say that the agents are actually going to get some benefit and some utility from joining a platform so from the outcome of your statistic. Um, if I'm joining some medical study for a rare disease, I'm expecting them getting some kind of like treatment in return. I'm like the outcome of the study is going to be beneficial to me. It's going to help me um, understand the rare disease better. It's going to lead eventually to new treatments. Um, if I'm a user on the platform, well, having a better recommendation system is going to benefit me. Um, in some way. So here are the ideas, like the better and like the more accurate your model is going to be, the more benefit and the more utility the agent is going to be getting from joining your platform or joining your study. So now I kind of like want to model this, but what I want to do is I want to model the absolute like simplest version of this problem. So I'm going to look at like the simplest possible kind of like learning or statistical task that you can do in the setting. And the simplest task that I can think of is I'm going to try to understand some mean property of my population. So I'm running a medical study and I'm trying to understand like some mean like genomic property of my population. 
So now what the analyst is going to do is, so what's going to happen in the setting is we'll face, as the analyst, I'm going to face a bunch of individuals. So it's going to be N individuals. And they're going to decide whether they want to participate in my study or in, the, in my online platform. And then as the analyst, I'll observe the data of the participants. And I'll be computing a noisy and weighted average of the data of the participants. So this is what it's going to look like. There's a couple of things going on here, but basically what I'm calling XI is just going to be the data that's reported by agent I. What I'll do is, like I told you, I'm computing a noisy weighted average. So here um, I have the WIs. So WI is going to be kind of like the weight that I'm going to be giving to agent I. And in the next slide, like why this weight is useful, what this is doing. And obviously, I'm trying to get differential privacy here. So as I told you, I need to kind of like add noise to my estimate for privacy. This is where the Laplace noise is going to come here. And so we're going to have Laplace noise with a uh, parameter eta. And as the analyst, I'll get to design both the weights, W, and the parameter eta. So now, on the other side, if I'm a user, an agent, I need to make a decision on whether I actually want to participate in the platform, in the study, whether I'm going to be willing to share my data. And here we're going to assume that basically, okay, this is going to depend on like actually how much privacy the agent is going to get. Uh, and you're going to have to kind of like go with me on this, but if I'm telling you that I'm using the estimator from like a few slides ago, like this estimator, the level of privacy that agent I is going to get is going to depend on their weight WI, on the weight you put on their data. So this level of privacy is going to be WI times eta. Um, and just the the general intuition and idea behind this is just the fact that if I put less weight on your data and I use your data less in the computation, you'll get better privacy, you'll get a better epsilon. That's just like the very general idea. But here, the point is like, why do we actually care about those weights? Why do we want to give different people different levels of privacy? Well, it's because different people might have different privacy costs. Different people might have different privacy attitudes. So here we're going to model the fact that different people might have different privacy attitudes by giving each agent a cost. And so each agent is going to have a cost here that's going to be um, linear. It's going to be the CI of epsilon I. Um, and so each agent is going to have this parameter CI in green that basically controls like how small or how big their privacy cost is going to be. And finally, what the agent would like to do is they're going to participate in the platform if they get enough utility, if their utility is like from joining the platform or participating in the study is higher than some outside option, which represents what happens if they're not actually joining the study. And so here, if you kind of like look at this um, utility, uh, what's happening is like, so you get some benefit from your um, computation right here. So remember, like in this case, theta hat is the statistic I'm computing. The variance of theta hat is the like measure of how accurate this computation is going to be. And like the more accurate the computation is going to be, the more of a benefit I'm going to get from it. So this is encoded in this utility function U. But I also care about my privacy cost, and I'm really trading off the benefit I get from the platform with the privacy cost here that I'm incurring from giving my data away. So now that you have this, basically, if I'm the platform, what I'm aiming to do is I'm a platform that's interested in coming up with the best possible model. I want to you know, increase the accuracy of my model as much as possible. So what I want to do is I want to kind of like here, minimize the variance of my estimator. I'm really trying to optimize the accuracy of my estimator. But I want to ensure that agents are going to participate in my study, participate in my platform. They're going to share their data. So I need to ensure that basically for each agent, I'm giving them like a better trade-off between the benefit they get and their privacy than if they did not join the platform. Finally, the last constraint here is just basically saying, if you want a model that's going to be unbiased, you need your weight to sum to one to be positive. All right, so now let me tell you a bit more about the kind of results that we get here. But the first thing that I want to point out is here I have a joint optimization on WI and ETA. This optimization problem is in general not going to be convex, especially due to the fact that we have like CI times WI times ETA here. However, if I fix the value of eta, I'm telling you, I already know the optimal eta and I just need to optimize the weights. It turns out that like under some conditions on you, you're going to need some condition on like the benefit you get here from, you know, joining a platform. Under some conditions on you, this is going to be a convex optimization program. So you can actually do something about it. Uh, one thing that's a bit hidden there is just actually the variance of your estimator does depend on how you choose your weight. So it does depend on your variables. 
But it just turns out that this is actually, uh, that has a nice closed form expression that just happens to be convex in the weights. Um, and this is just linear in a W, like the cost term is written in W, so this whole program is convex. So technically, you know, if I just want to solve this problem, like algorithmically, that's like not a hard problem to solve. But what I want to point out is like we go beyond just algorithmic results in this paper. I will actually tell you what the optimal solution is going to look like in semi closed form. And the optimal solution is going to look something like this. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm plotting the weights here on the y axis of uh, each agent as a function of their cost on the x axis. Each different line, each different color corresponds to a different value of the parameter eta that I'm going to be using in my computation. And kind of like what I'm seeing here, what's um, arising here is there's two regimes in our solution. And the first one is you're going to be taking all of the agents that have low enough privacy costs, you're going to pull them together and you're going to treat them the same and give them kind of like the same weight. But beyond that threshold, once the privacy costs of the agents become higher, you're actually going to have to lower their weight so that you're basically giving them enough privacy and they have a good trade-off between the accuracy of their uh, of the model and the utility you get from that and the level of privacy that they get. And so what's going to happen there is that actually in that second part of, uh, of the plot in this regime, uh, the uh, solution is going to be evolving inversely proportionally with the agent's cost. So it's kind of like the general idea of like what the uh, optimal solution is going to look like. But now that we know what the optimal solution is going to look like, you still have to optimize over eta. This is the optimal solution for a fixed value of eta. I haven't told you how to optimize over eta. I'll go over this like super quickly. If you think about it for a second, eta is just a real number. It's just a one-dimensional parameter. Optimizing over eta is pretty easy. It's not going to be a problem here. Then um, kind of like last few things that I want to mention. Uh, one of the things that I want to mention is like, this is one of the models we have in the paper. We also consider a variant of the model in which you have a less sophisticated user who uh, basically can't maybe do that whole computation of like, oh, I'm going to trade off the accuracy and I have to be able to anticipate the accuracy of my model. So maybe it's hard to kind of like trade off, you know, the um, accuracy of the model with your privacy cost. It's not that hard, however, to kind of like understand your privacy cost if I'm telling you how much I'm going to use your data in the computation. So looking at a variant of the model in which uh, what I'm going to say, each agent has a maximum threshold on how much of a privacy loss they're going to incur. They're going to be willing to participate as long as their privacy is going to be better than that threshold. Um, and they also still are interested in getting like the most possible, like, like the most accurate model possible. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to see that the solution is going to look the same. We're going to have the same kind of like pulling region for low privacy cost and like decreasing uh, weights for kind of like higher privacy costs. Uh, and we'll also actually in this case be able to give you a full closed form solution that gives you an entire closed form characterization of both the weights and the parameter eta. The really last thing that I want to mention here is in all of this, I've been implicitly assuming that I actually know the privacy cost of the agents, which is not very realistic in real life. And generally, you're going to have to actually figure out what those privacy costs are going to be. And you can imagine that a strategic agent, they might actually lie about their privacy costs. They might overstate their privacy costs so that they actually get more uh, privacy. Um, so in, and I just mentioned two models in this paper, in the original model, I want to point out that the follow-up of Phthalide all is actually solving this problem and designing truthful mechanisms for this problem. Um, and in the variant of our model, you actually don't need to do anything because the incentives of the users and the platforms are well aligned and we're both interested in getting as much accuracy as possible out of the model. And it just turned out that in this case, we're going to get truthfulness for free. If I understate my cost, that's going to be bad possibly for me for privacy. But if I overstate my cost, what's going to happen is I'm going to make the model worse. So I don't want to do this. And so you actually get truth and loss really easily in this setting. Um, and that's all I wanted to mention. So yeah, thanks for uh, listening. Do you have any questions?